Hello, welcome to Steam McDonald's Arts and Crafts. Now, I've mentioned in a lot of my videos when I'm using my own white resin paste. And a lot of people have said, how do you make it? To show you how easy it is to not only make your own resin paste that create brilliant colours and very colour fast colours as well, but also save yourself quite a lot of money. And that makes a big difference to me because buying resin pastes are quite expensive. But buying the ingredients and making your own is not expensive at all. I always start with three little pots and these are just pots that I've had glitter or something in. I've washed them on, out on the inside and took the labels off. I always use part B of the resin. I have made colours using a part B from different resins that I've had and used it in different resins. So I maybe used, let's say, a part B from resin colour resin and I've used those colours in J Diction resin, Let's Resin, Art resin, all different types of resins over the years. Today I'm using a part B hardener from J Diction because I use J Diction's resins quite a lot. I would still be happy to use this colour that it makes in any resin. You will need a piece of glass if you haven't got a piece of glass, then I would suggest going to a charity shop, getting a cheap picture frame and using the glass out of that. You'll need a knife like this, or a plastic one, and some gloves. Now, there isn't a great deal of measuring goes on with this because I don't feel I need to measure. My first one is titanium dioxide. It's freely available. It's used to whiten chocolate and things like that. And all I do is I take out some of this like that. Then I pour some part B into the middle of it. Then I use my little knife to scoop that into it. And you'll be surprised what I'm going to be using for the next colours. And then what you need to do is you need to turn this into a really smooth paste. You see how easily that absorbs into all that resin. This lasts at least a year, if not longer. The one I just finished, I probably made two years ago. And you will only need a little bit of this, but it's about getting it all nice and smooth and making sure that there is no lumps in it whatsoever. And that's why working on a piece of glass really helps because you can scrape that all back into place. And then if you've got it on your stick and you want to get it off your stick, I just use a lolly stick to do that with and then put it to the one side. Now I'll probably do this for about five minutes until I'm really really happy that it's all nice and smooth. I've had this titanium dioxide pot now for several years. It lasts a long time and makes a lot of this paste. That's about the consistency that you want it. But that's been going now for about five minutes and it's made a lovely paste and all I need to do now is put that into my jar and put a lid on it. And like I said this white will go a really long way. I just need to clean up my tools ready for the next colour and all I'm going to be using again you know how I love my baby wipes and that'll clean that glass up lovely. I don't know if anyone saw on my other channel recently I did some colouring experiments with cement I made some brilliant little cement models I was very pleased with the way that they came out so what I'm going to do is see if these cement colours high quality oxide pigment actually work to make some good pigments for resin and I'm going to do it exactly the same way. This is the red, and then we'll use them at the end and see how they come out. Again, I'm going to mix this one in for five minutes or until it's lovely and smooth. And the last colour that I'm going to make, I use a lot of as well, which is this black. And I'm going to be using that out of the same oxide cement colour, doing it exactly the same way as I've done the other two. I will link everything in the description below if you want to make your own to save yourself a lot of money on resin colours. And that way you'll be able to easily get hold of it as well. We've got our colours made so let's now show what they can do. Remember that when you're using these they're a very concentrated colour so you don't need much just a little bit because you can always add more if you feel it hasn't got enough depth to the colour and as with any paste that you put into resin it's really important to make sure that you mix it thoroughly through to ensure that you've got no areas where there isn't any colour it will mix really easily. There is no doubt about it and just take a few seconds to mix it in and look how lovely and white and creamy that colour is. So let's try the black one. Now the black one looks like it is a little bit more gritty but it, it actually isn't and you will see that coming up. And this mixes in really easily as well. And again, making sure that you scrape the actual stick or whatever you're using to add the colour onto the side to get as much of it off as possible. Now with black, it's either black or it's not black. You can add the white to it and make a really nice grey. Now with the red, I'm even putting in less because this is such a 
deep red and I want to try and create a lighter, more vibrant red. I could have added a little bit of white to this as well, but that would have tended to make it go a little bit more pinky and I didn't want it to be a pink. I wanted it to be a deep red because that's what I'm more likely to use. And again, mixing that in thoroughly. Once you've mixed it in, if you're concerned it's got bubbles, you're not going to see them anyway because it's not going to be translucent, it's going to be opaque. But you can always leave it just to settle for a few minutes and allow those bubbles to come to the top. But look at that lovely red that it's made. Again, scraping the stick and getting it ready, just making sure that I've got it all mixed in. And what I'm doing is I'm pairing some of these up to show you what, how lovely these cure and what great colours they make. The first one I'm doing is the black one. I absolutely love these moulds. They're my favourite pendant moulds, without a doubt. And I'm going to do just a plain black one, just a plain white one. And I'm pouring in these moulds slowly because I don't want to trap any bubbles in the side of there as well. And I'm also going to do a plain red one. I just want to say a quick thank you to all my awesome members. Thank you so much for all your support. You are brilliant people and I love the amount of engagement we have in the other groups. Thank you very much. So here, my favourite two, or colours, or non-colours, I suppose, uh, which is monochrome, black and white. And you'll see how lovely this comes out. There is a real contrast to these when it's finished. It's thundering here, so I'm sorry if the uh, voiceover's picking that up. So we'll leave that there. And now I'm going to be doing a another one but this time I'm going to be mixing up the black and the red and seeing how they work together. Another really big thank you to everyone that got me a coffee last month. I really can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It's you guys and my members that really do show your love and appreciation through tipping me through the coffees and supporting me through the membership that keep this channel going and allow me to do these projects. And now I'm using the red and the black, and you will see that these won't blend into each other. They will keep nice and separate. So there's lots you can do with these colours. It's well worth it. And once you've bought this stuff, you never have to buy any more of the ready-made pigments ever again because they're really expensive. And the last one is using all three colours together to see how that one comes out. I will go over these, they, but they go over really well with a torch, the same as anything else that you can add to resin apart from alcohol inks. Pop those bubbles and then have a little tidy up, leave them to cure. Well, these have all cured now and looking at them from here, they look brilliant. That red is a really intense red. I think that's a really vibrant red and it's come out great in there, lovely lot of shine. No spots in there where the colour is not mixed in. Have a look at the white. I know the white always works because I use it all the time. Brilliant white, titanium white, of course. So let's see how well they combine together. Oh yeah, look at that. That's combined really well. And the black, I use a lot of black. Oh, and that's come out a really deep, dark black. Look at that. And look at the black and white. Oh, I think maybe it's because I'm colourblind, but I really enjoy making things that are monochrome like this, black and white, black and red. I love this mould, it's my favourite pendant mould. Oh, that's come out nice too, look. And then the last one, which is all three colours together, and again, that has come out really well. This is a great way to save yourself a lot of money on ready-made pigments that are really expensive. Buying yourself those colours, to be honest, will last you a lifetime. You'd never have to buy mixed colours again. They do other colours as well. I'm certainly going to be making up the rest of my colours that I've got using this method and using them in my resin work. Let me know in the comments below what you use to make your colours or if you've made colours before. Also, if you're going to have a go at this, I'd love to know if you're going to start making your own colours. Be sure to boot that like button. If you'd like to get hold of anything that I've used today, the links for everything are in the description below. As well as the links to lots of other things as well. Take care, enjoy your resin, bye!